Hello guys, welcome to Metan. In this video, we are going to discuss about erector sheath, its formation, features, contents, and clinical correlation. So, what is erector sheath? Erector sheath is a aponeurotic sheath enclosing the rectus, rectus abdominis muscle. It's a aponeurotic sheath that encloses the rectus abdominis muscle. It is derived from the aponeurosis of flat muscles of the anterior abdominal wall. Flat muscles of the anterior abdominal wall are internal oblique, external oblique and transverse abdominis. What are the functions of rectus sheath? It checks the bowing of rectus abdominis muscle. Bowing of rectus abdominis muscle. Rectus abdominis. And it maintains the strength of the anterior abdominal wall. So these are the functions of the rectus sheath. Coming to features. Features of the rectus sheath. Coming to features of the rectus sheath. What are the features of the rectus sheath? The rectus sheath presents anterior and posterior walls. It has two walls. Anterior and posterior. And the anterior wall is complete and covers the entire extent of the muscle. But posterior wall is incomplete. Anterior wall is complete. The posterior wall is incomplete. The posterior wall is deficient. We will see how. Coming to the anterior and posterior walls of rectus sheath. I am going to draw the rectus abdominis muscle here. This is the rectus abdominis muscle. These are the costal cartilages. 5, 6 and 7. 5, 6 and 7 costal cartilages. This is the posterior abdominal wall. Posterior abdominal wall. Right? Then, we have a rectus sheath here. The green color one. This is the rectus sheath. Anterior wall of the rectus sheath. It has its tendinous insertions into the rectus abdominis muscle and this is the posterior wall of the rectus abdominis muscle which ends like this and these are the 5, 6, 7 coastal cartilages here you find the diaphragm and then you find the two arteries here this one's the superior epigastric artery and this one's the inferior epigastric artery so what we are discussing here, anterior and posterior walls of the and posterior walls of the rectus sheath. It has its tendinous insertions into the rectus abdominis muscle. Posterior wall is incomplete at the arcuate line. Above it is attached to the 7th, 8th and 9th coastal ribs and lies directly on the 5th, 6th and 7th and below at the arcuate line it is ending it. Coming to formation of rectus sheath. Formation of rectus sheath. The formation of rectus sheath differs from both above and below the level of coastal margin. First we are discussing the above the coastal margin above the level of coastal margin what do you have in the above of the coastal margin the anterior wall is formed by the ex aponeurosis of external oblique only aponeurosis of external oblique only so the posterior wall is deficient posterior wall is deficient so what we have is the the external oblique and this is the sixth seventh and fifth eighth ribs it comes like this I'm going to show it here this is the external oblique muscle its tendinous fibers this is the rectus abdominis muscle and this is from the anterior wall anterior wall is formed by the aponeurosis of external oblique muscle above the 6th, 7th and 
the eighth costal ribs and then another one is the in the middle we have the three aponeurotic fibers of the external oblique internal oblique and transverse abdominals all those fibers will come like this from here and from down and they will get inserted so this will be the rectus abdominis this is the rectus abdominis external fibers oblique will combine the above and downwards like this they will combine here it combines here so the middle most fibers is formed by both external oblique internal oblique and transverse abdominis and then we have another one i am drawing it here the last inferior wall is formed by the both all the three external oblique in internal oblique and transverse abdominis and all the fibers will pass upward of the rectus abdominis muscle we have the rectus abdominis muscle here and all will pass upward and to be inserted so this is how the formation of rectus sheath looks like one at the above, above the level of costal margin anterior wall is formed by the aponeurus of external oblique only and posterior wall is deficient and between the costal margin and the arcuate line anterior wall is formed by the fusion of external oblique and internal oblique posterior wall is formed by the aponeurus of internal oblique and the transverse oblique and below the level of arcuate line anterior wall is formed by the aponeurus of both external oblique internal oblique and transverse abdominis and the posterior wall is deficient below the arcuate line coming to the contents of rectus sheath the rectus sheath contains the following structures first one is that it contains two muscles which are rectus abdominis and uh, pyramidalis rectus abdominis and pyramidalis second thing it contains two arteries which are nothing but a superior epigastric and inferior epigastric and the inferior epigastric third one it has contains two veins which correspond to the arteries same superior and inferior epigastric veins superior epigastric vein inferior epigastric vein the fourth thing is that it contains six nerves which are the six nerves the lower part of the thoracic nerves from t7 to t12 and it may also contain the l1 iliohypogastric and hypogastric and ilioinguinal nerves so these are the contents of the rectus sheath lastly coming to the clinical correlation of the rectus sheath in the clinical correlation of the rectus sheath we are going to discuss about divarication of recti divarication of recti cation of recti and we are going to discuss about hematoma of rectus sheath hematoma of rectus sheath and then we are going to discuss about the epigastric hernia so these are three things we are going to discuss under the clinical correlation of the rectus sheath coming to divarication uh, of recti the separation of the two rectus muscle usually occur in the elderly multipara woman what is divarication of recti which is the, we have the rectus muscle right so it will get separated like this so which occurs mainly in the multipara woman in the elderly this is due to weak abdominal muscles what happens is in this condition the aponeurus is forming the rectus sheath becomes excessively stretched consequently when the patient cuffs or strains the recti separate so first of all they are loose so upon the stressing during cuffing and uh, stressing these will separate so this is known as the divarication of the recti coming to hematoma of the rectus sheath the inferior and superior epigastric arteries which are unduly stretched in the severe bout of cuffing 
in severe cuffing, the superior and inferior epigastric arteries that are below the rectus sheath will get ruptured and this will cause the hematoma of the rectus sheath. So, this clinically it presents as midline abdominal plane and tender mass confined to one rectus sheath. It presents as midline abdominal vein, abdominal pain. and tender mass mass on one rectus sheath one rectus sheath it presents as the tender mass coming to the epigastric hernia the linea alba which is the midline mid fibrous referite it is formed by the interlacing of aponeurotic fibers of the three flat muscles they will come to form the linea alba so what happens is above the umbilicus it is wider about one centimeter and below the umbilicus it is very very narrow so in elderly multiparous women, when, when they are chronically ill, what happens is the intra-abdominal pressure is severely raised. So a small amount of extra peritoneal fat may protrude to the upper part of linea alba and eventually drag behind a small peritoneal sac. First of all, their abdominal wall is weak. So due to increased intra-abdominal pressure, which may be due to coughing or anything, it may lead to leak of the extra peritoneal fat it may also drag the peritoneal sac so this results in the epigastric hernia which uh, first of all it may not occur above the umbilicus because it is thick up to one centimeter it mainly occurs below the umbilicus because it is thin there thank you guys thank you for watching if you like the video make sure to subscribe and like the video please share it to your other friends thank you so much